So, today we have Come and See. And what can I say? It's a masterpiece in all forms. Technically, visually, acting, and sound. This movie truly captivates the effect of war, and I can say it's extremely realistic and almost too much at parts. And that's what makes it special. Because usually war films, you can still feel that it's a movie. It has some type of wall between the viewer and the movie. But here the movie breaks the gap between viewer and movie and takes you right into it. When I was watching the movie I couldn't take my eyes off the screen for a moment, even during the very harsh parts. This movie will show you how war affects people and how it changes them, and it does it in a good way and straight to it, not hiding behind some poetry or wannabe artsy with cameos. And Moo succeeds with all these things without showing action or battle sequences. This movie will truly show you what happened in Belarus during the height of World War II during 1943. It shows the atrocities the German army did to the people in Belarus, where a quarter of the Belarusian population was killed, and it's an event not many people know about or speak about nowadays. I can tell you the movie sets you right into the war. We have Alexei Kravchenko and Olga Mironova as the protagonists, Flora and Glasha. And the screenplay is by Klimov and Alice Adamovich. And they had to wait 8 years for approval. The film was finally produced to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the Soviet victory in World War II. And it was a large box office hit, with 28 million admissions in the Soviet Union alone. The film was selected as the Soviet entry for Best Foreign Language Film at the 58th Academy Awards, but strangely and surprisingly was not accepted. And for a long time the filming could not begin. The uh, state committee for cinematography would not accept the screenplay, considering it to be too natural and realistic. But in the end Klimov was able to start filming in 1984 without having compromised to any censorship at all. The film was shot in chronological order over a period of 9 months. The acting in this movie is superb. Every actor here plays believable roles and it all felt real. The actor, and especially the main actor, must have gone through hell just in the filming of the movie. During the filming they used real and live ammunition for the weapons for realism. And at some parts real bullets went about 10 centimeters above his head. And they had to swim through a real cold and dirty swamp for the movie. And adding to the movie's realism, there's a scene where a cow gets shot, which they did in real life. They actually shot the cow for the film. There were occurrences where the main actor was hypnotized in order to simulate the proper degree of shell shock during one of the major early sequences. He was also on a strict diet and after filming was over he returned to his school not only thin but grey haired. And note that during the movie the main actor gets older and older the more he experiences. So most of the time you could see a genuine reaction from the actors during the movie which adds to its extreme realism. People could complain about its camera quality and I understand it and the movie needs to get a Blu-ray release as soon as possible. At least a remaster or some type of HD quality to it. But at the same time the camera quality adds to the realism. It, it's almost like someone was in that time period with a normal camcorder filming everything that was going on and which gives you an eerie feeling. There are amazing scenes like when the Russian partisans have captured German SS soldiers and they get a chance to speak. One of these soldiers, and the most fanatic one, tells the Russians to their face on how their race does not deserve to exist. And remember, he's held captive and saying this. The partisan commander tells his troops to listen to the fanatic and what he says, to show the Russians that the war is not only fought because of ideologies, but also for the existence. In one scene where Flora, our main character, is back in his home after it's been raided by the Germans, he sits down at his table and eats his food. Yet it is clear to Glasha and unclear to him that his family has been probably killed or kidnapped as everything in the house is thrown around and flies bust in every corner. In this moment viewers can smell the rotten stench of sweat, tears, spit, blood and bad food just from the buzzing of the flies, the eerie colors of the house and the bloody teddy bears thrown on the floor which makes the viewer very uncomfortable. This whole scene is just very very uncomfortable. The music of the movie is truly haunting with songs from Mozart at parts and its own soundtrack which adds a tense and scary feeling to the film 
and even at times chaotic with different songs, or the sound of a German plane circling above the protagonist at different parts in the movie, which gives off a sound that's hypnotizing and eerie, and will definitely make me uncomfortable if I hear the sound of it. If you have noticed, I have not talked about the movie's main plot or story, and I will not. Because if you have not seen this movie, you have to. So I do not wish to spoil the movie for you. The director of the movie, Klimov, did not make any more films after Come and See, leading some critics to speculate as to why. In 2001, Klimov said, I lost interest in making films. Everything that was possible, I felt I'd already done. This statement only adds to it, and I can only imagine the mental and physical toll it took on the director to make this film. Klimov co-wrote the screenplay with Alex Adamovich, who fought with the Belarusian partisans as a teenager, according to the director's recollections. The director himself was in Stalingrad and evacuated, so both makers of the movie had a first-hand experience of World War II, which makes the meaning of the film even greater. And during the filming, they used real original uniforms and props. This movie is truly one of a kind, and I have not seen another movie come close to the impact of this film. War Movie should take an example from this film, as it's a masterpiece. But maybe it is for the better that there's only one movie like this. The film affected many people on its release. There were cases where ambulances had to come to the movie theater to take out affected viewers of the movie. And this happened both in the Soviet Union and abroad. There was a case when during one of the after film discussions, an elderly German stood up and said, I was a soldier of the Wehrmacht, moreover an officer of the Wehrmacht. I traveled through all of Poland and Belarus, finally reaching Ukraine. And I will testify, everything that is told in this film is the truth. And the most frightening and shameful thing for me is that this film will be seen by my children and grandchildren. I can truly say that this film is one of my favorite movies of all times. And if you have not seen it, you have to see it. This movie is not for the faint of hearted. But even so, I will recommend it to everyone that has not seen it. The movie has a strong scene where our main lead shoots a portrait of Hitler. And for every shot, it reverses the lifetime and consequences he did. This is the first time he actually uses his rifle. After each shot, there's a sequence of montages that play in reverse and regresses time, depicting the rise of Hitler and the Third Reich. Backwards from corpses at a concentration camp to images of Hitler as a schoolboy. And finally, a picture of the infant Adolf in his mother's lap. Flora shoots at each of the images, yet he cannot bring himself to fire at the still shot of baby Hitler. Which makes you think, would you have it in you to kill an innocent baby even if it would end up becoming like Hitler? And because of not killing him, does it differentiate us from the things done by people during war to being human? I don't really know the answer of this, but this movie provokes these thoughts of war, and I applaud it for it. I remember seeing this movie on a movie theater as a re-screening of it in 2014 and after the movie was over no one in the audience spoke a word because there was nothing to be said. Everyone in the movie had experienced it and felt it. And I can tell you that everyone that sees this movie will not be leaving it unchanged. Thanks for watching.